Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now Microsoft is doubling down on its efforts to design its own ARM CPU by hiring an ex-CPU designer from ARM and from Apple. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, in December of 2020, a story broke that Microsoft was going to start designing its own ARM-based CPUs, primarily aimed at its cloud offering, so that's server-based chips, but it also might trickle down into its Surface products, so that would be laptops and desktops. Now, for those of you that watch my channel, you know there are two kinds of licensees for ARM uh, CPU stuff. The one is a kind of a normal core licensee, so a so, uh, chip manufacturer wants to use a Cortex a78 for example or Cortex X1 inside of one of their system on a chips they have a license agreement they basically can take that design put it into their chip and then sell it and then as they sell it there may be royalty payments each one has a kind of its own business relationship with ARM but there's a second category and that's people who have an architectural license and that allows them to say we want to design our own CPU without any connection to what ARM are doing clean sheet white room clean room design but ARM say yes it's absolutely fine but you pay us a royalty and you have to confirm that your chip is 100% compatible with the ARM architecture so no sneaky stuff going on and so Apple for example is an architectural license ho uh, holder so is Samsung so is Qualcomm and there's quite a big list now it seems that Microsoft is also a holder of one of these uh, licenses and it's designing its own custom CPU now the reason it's doing this is because ARM is proving to be quite a good value proposition inside of the cloud server market. So it makes sense, I mean Amazon have done it, they've got their Graviton and Graviton 2 uh, processors and so uh, Microsoft wants to do it also for their cloud uh, offerings. Now the thing about cloud offerings is, is that what do you want? Do you want high compute you know really really intense compute or do you want to be able to handle multiple connections at once well of course there are cases for both but really important if you think about it is having multiple connections at once you've got all of these millions of requests coming in to the data center and you want to be able to handle all of them and some of them might simply be serving a web page or just looking something in a database or handling a piece of network traffic so the idea is if you can have uh, ARM CPU cores with many, many cores in them, not threads, but actual pure cores, and that these run at a good performance rate, then actually you can service lots and lots of clients and actually at a quite a lower energy um, usage, energy, high energy efficiency. That's what Amazon have started doing, and that looks like what Microsoft want to do for their cloud services. So who are we talking about? We're talking about Mike Filippo. Now Mike Filippo is a kind of a rock star kind of CPU designer. He's worked for AMD, he's worked for Intel, he worked for over 10 years at ARM itself, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. And then recently he was uh, poached by uh, Apple. He started working at Apple, having worked for a long time at ARM, designing stuff there. We're assuming for ARM stuff, uh, ARM-based stuff for, you know, MacBooks, M1, the M2, whatever. Never really any details given, but he only stayed there a couple of years, and now he's moved over to Microsoft. Now, I did actually interview uh, Mike Filippo back uh, a while ago when the Cortex A72 came out, and he is a big fellow, as this clip will show you. Hi, it's Gary Sims here from Android Authority. We're spending a few days with ARM in London, and I'm speaking to Mike Filippo, the lead architect of the Cortex A72 processor. <laughs> So let's just quickly look at the resume of Mike Filippo. Just how good is he? So he was the lead architect of the Cortex A57. Of course, that was ARM's first generation of 64-bit CPU. He then went on to be the lead architect for the Cortex A72, the Cortex A76, the Cortex A78, the Cortex X1. These are all chips of which he was the lead architect. And he was also the lead architect for the Neoverse N1 and for the Neoverse V1. So obviously, if you want an expert on designing ARM-based chips, this guy is it. He's the guy that designed ARM's own 64-bit offering for ARM V8 when that first came out, the Cortex A57. But not only do you know how to do it for mobile, look at the Neoverse N1 and the Neoverse V1, and that's the chip. The N1 is what's used by Graviton by uh, Amazon. This guy knows how to do everything. He can do server stuff, he can do mobile stuff, high memory throughput, power efficiency. He's your guy, and he's now working for Microsoft 
working on their next generation of ARM-based processor for the cloud that could eventually also trickle down. Now, of course, we know that Apple have probably the best ARM based chips uh, in the industry, particularly in the mobile industry. That's not really up for discussion. But over the last few years now, kind of lots of our, our Apple talent has kind of moved out because we had the thing with Nuvia and of course Nuvia got then bought out by Qualcomm. So the guy that was responsible for designing a lot of the stuff for Apple is now working for Qualcomm. And although there's probably lots and lots of stuff that they have to be very careful about trade secrets, you know, all that stuff up here in his head is now being used by Qualcomm. And Qualcomm are quite keen to say that they're gonna have uh, some really good ARM-based chips coming up uh, in the next kind of cycle or two based on the technology and the people they got with Nuvia. And also we had another Apple executive leave recently from uh, ARM and go over to Intel. And now we've got Mike Filippo, who's also left Apple and has now gone over to Microsoft. And Mike Filippo, in those two years he was there, he certainly would have brought his own experience and also uh, kind of learned what Apple were doing there. And he's now going to take him on to the next stage even further. So a loss for Apple. Of course, there are other engineers at Apple. They're not closing down. But a loss for Apple, again for Qualcomm earlier on, again for Intel, and now again for Microsoft with Mike Filippo moving here. So we really are going to see quite a lot of interesting stuff happening in the ARM CPU space over the next two years. Now, here's a question for you to answer in the comments. Would you like to see Microsoft launch its own ARM-based laptop and desktop stuff? So we've already got, of course, the Surface Pro X, for example, which is a Microsoft uh, Windows laptop running Windows 10 and now Windows 11. I've tested it on my one here with an ARM CPU unit from Qualcomm. So that's working there. Would you like to see Microsoft move more in that area and have more ARM uh, CPUs uh, in its desktops and in its laptop offerings. And so that Windows now doesn't just become really the kind of the x86 uh, thing. It can be over ARM and x86. And we have an option of what we want to go. Already, of course, we've seen Apple do that with the M1s. Or do you think Microsoft should just really concentrate on its cloud offerings and just put those ARM chips uh, in the servers? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments. Well, there isn't really a wrong answer. It's really kind of, you know, what would we like to see? Speculation. And a bit of speculation can be fun. Okay, that's it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you like these kind of videos and you didn't know about architectural licenses on, and core licenses, well then stick around, subscribe to the channel because I'll cover these kinds of things in lots and lots of videos. And there's a whole bunch of videos for you to go back and watch. Don't forget, you can follow me on Twitter at Gary Explains. And also I have a monthly newsletter. Go over to GaryExplains.com, type in your email address, no spam, just the newsletter. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.